Hello, welcome to this tutorial on Lightroom. So today I'm going to be taking you through everything you'll need to know in order to edit your very first image in Adobe Lightroom. Let's get to it. Okay, so here we are inside my computer. First things first, let's open our Lightroom. That seems like a good place to start. Now, when you open Lightroom, you will be shown a catalogue of all photos you have previously imported into Lightroom. Of course, if this is your first time using Lightroom, this will be empty. Adobe have made this application nice and easy to use by splitting the screen into three columns. On the left, you have where your photos are stored, in the middle are your photos, and on the right, you have various options to add and remove metadata to your images or perform quick develop. We won't be doing that today. So if we start on the left hand side, at the top is a preview of an image that is selected in the middle pane. Under that you have your catalogue which links to any photos you have previously imported into Lightroom. Under that you have your folders. This is your PC or Mac file structure that you can use to find and import new images. And under that you have the collections folder. This is kind of an Adobe specific file structure, allowing you to organize your photos into portrait and landscape folders, for example, but without moving the original file from your PC or Mac file structure. It's pretty nifty. In the middle pane, you have any photos that are in the folders you have selected on the left. You can rotate them using the buttons in the bottom left and bottom right when you select them. A preview is also shown in the navigator on the left. To import new photos, you have a number of options. You can go to File, Import Photos and Videos, or select Import in the bottom left under the Navigator, or hit Command, Shift and I on your keyboard for a Mac, or Control, Shift and I on a PC. This will bring up a new window. Simply navigate to the photo or photos you'd like to import on the left and hit Import in the bottom right. Once you have the photos you'd like to import, you can add keywords on the right hand side to assist with searching, or change the metadata within the file. It will also display all the technical data relating to the photo you've highlighted, but we'll leave this for now. So now it's time for the exciting part, editing. Click on the image you'd like to edit and go up to the top right and hit develop. For any of those interested, this is a slight play on words. So traditionally you'd develop photos in a dark room. Now we've come out of the dark ages and we're developing photos in a light room. So there you go, fun fact for you all. Anyway, Again, we have three columns on the developing screen. On the left are your presets, which we won't be using today. In the middle, you have your preview or work plane, depending on what you'd like to call it. And on the right, you have your editing tools. Ooh. Okay, so that is getting your images into Lightroom. And before we move on to the editing stage, we'll just take a quick breather. Um, if you are enjoying this video, please make sure you subscribe using the red button down below, because it really does help me out with running the channel. Also, if you like what I'm doing and you'd like to see more of my images, all of them are on Instagram. I tend to shoot a lot of aerial drone footage and also landscapes. So please go check out my Instagram. It's linked down in the description. My username is at CTRJohnny. Okay, so let's move on to editing your first image in Lightroom. Here it goes. At the top, you have your histogram and you can use this to change your image by clicking and dragging. In the middle, you can change your exposure. To the left of that, you can change your shadows. And at the far left, you have your blacks. To the right, you have your highlights. And to the far right are your whites. If you drag it all the way to the left, the image will go darker. If you drag it all the way to the right, the image will get lighter. In the top left and right of the histogram, you'll see these little triangles. These are your clippings. When you click on the left hand clipping, anything that is pure black in your image will be highlighted in blue. And when you click on the right hand clipping, anything that is pure white will be highlighted in red. Once you finish playing, you can right click on the histogram and hit reset all to return it to the original image. Below the histogram, you have a selection of basic tools including red eye correction, but we won't cover these today. The next section down is the white balance. I like to use the eyedrop tool as it makes life very easy. Simply select an area that should be white and Lightroom will do the rest. You could also use the sliders to adjust the temperature and tint manually or select from the Lightroom preset which also includes an auto setting. If we scroll down again we get to the tone section. This section looks at the blacks, whites, highlights and shadows. It does also have an auto button but this has a habit of overexposing images so I suggest using this as a guide only. In this section, have a play around with the sliders until you are happy. You can use the highlight slider to gain some detail back in any areas which may appear to be too light, and also the shadow slider to gain more detail in darker areas of the images. 
whites and blacks do what they say on the tin and adjust the white and black details in the images. You can use the backslash key on your keyboard to view the original image and see how far you've come. Dropping down the tool section again, we get to the presence section. This is where you adjust the colour in your image. So clarity looks at the sharpness or softness of your image. For me, this is more of an effect rather than a correction and it certainly shouldn't be used for skin softening as it will ruin the rest of your image. If you go the other way, it makes the image look overly sharp. Some users quite like this effect, but I prefer a bit more of a natural look. There is no wrong way or right way to use this slider, it's totally up to you. The vibrant slider will change the colours in the midtones, and the saturation slide will change all the colours. A handy hint for you all, try reducing the saturation and increasing the vibrance for a far more natural finish. If we scroll down a little more, we get to the tone curve. If you hover over the tone curve, you'll see the lower half of the tone curve is your darks and shadows, and the upper half of the curve is your highlights and lights. You can click and drag this around and it will change your image. If you want to reset the tone curve, simply right click and select reset all. In the bottom right, there's a little button which says click to edit point curve, which opens up a whole new world of possibilities for this tool. You can click on the line to create pivot points. This will allow you to create different effects. One of my favorite is to stick a pivot right in the middle, pull the top half up a little bit and pull the bottom half down a bit. This creates a really cinematic look. You can also change the channel from RGB to edit individual red, green and blue channels for a different look. Now moving on to HSL, which stands for Hue, Saturation and Luminescence. In short, Hue changes the colours, Saturation changes the intensity of these colours and Luminescence changes how much light is going through these colours. These sliders are very much trial and error to get the image looking as you'd like, so I won't spend too much time here. But I will point out to you that the black and white icon is here. This will toggle the image to black and white and will make life so much easier when you are editing the luminescence. Moving on to split toning, this is where you can add colour to both the highlights and the shadows. The balance slider moves colour from the highlights to the shadows and vice versa. Detail. This enables you to sharpen your image and give a far more precise and cleaner look, but be careful here as it's really easy to make an image look grainy. We won't go into too much detail here about the amount slider, as this is how much sharpening you add to your image, and the masking slider is how much attention Lightroom pays to the edges. For example, in this image here, you can see that the subject is well masked and Lightroom is not trying to sharpen the sky. Noise reduction does what it says on the tin and reduces noise in images. Again, be very careful here as noise reduction can quickly smudge an image when used incorrectly. Lens correction in Lightroom is incredibly powerful. It uses the metadata from the photo to determine what camera the image was captured on and which lens it was using. However, if the metadata does not include this information, you can add your own using the drop-down menus. And finally, to export your new fantabulous edited image, you can hit Command, Shift and E on a Mac or Control, Shift and E on a PC to open the export window. This is also available from File, Export. In this panel, you can change where your image is exported to, its size and what format it is exported in. Hit Export and very quickly, you'll be able to see your freshly edited image wherever you saved it. And there you have it, that is all the tools you need in order to edit your first image in Adobe Lightroom. I hope you found this useful, if you did please make sure you subscribe using the red button below and I will catch you in the next video. If you enjoyed this review please consider subscribing by clicking here and if you want to see more of my reviews please click here to see another video. Thanks for watching.